Hello, it's Lou Collins and welcome to another Distress Oxide colour combination video. So today we're going to be looking at festive berries. If you've not joined me on this colour combination series before, I'd love it if you could subscribe, drop me a thumbs up on this video at the end if you liked it. And uh, of course, take a look at the playlist because we are already up to festive berries throughout this series and we're working through each of the Distress Oxide colours alphabetically. This means that if we're on F, there's already around about 20 videos for you to go and catch up on. Now with each video, I'm going to look at the colour uh, in question, the colour that we're focusing on today in depth. We're also going to compare it to other colours in the range as well that are close by. And then I'm going to give you two different colour combinations using this particular colour, uh, one with an additional two colours and one with an additional three colours. And this is going to hopefully broaden your scope for mixing and combining all of your Distress Oxides, but don't forget these will also work with the Distress Inks as well. So Festive Berries, first of all, is a lovely kind of pink tone, a dark coral. It is a red, it falls under the red category, or certainly for me anyway, but it is definitely with a pink undertone there. So I'll just do around about a third of this cardstock here and you can see there what a lovely, absolutely beautiful colour that is. So it's not bright red, it's not a not a striking fire engine red or anything like that. I wouldn't actually put it in the pink tones either because I think it's it's a little too dark for the pink tones. So um, yeah, it just falls right between red and pink really. Um, but a lovely, lovely colour. So festive berries, because it's called festive berries, it does work really well with sort of your bright contemporary Christmas colours. I certainly wouldn't call it a traditional Christmas red by any means. So let's then go on to comparing this colour with other reds that are in the Distress Oxide range. So these are the ones that I have that I feel are closest to festive berries. Let's just take the lid off of this first of all. Now thank you to one of my viewers who commented and let me know or let me know that I hadn't let you know that uh, the bottom left hand corner of each of the labels is where the colour is most true to what's in the ink pad. So you notice that the Distress Oxide labels are kind of your watercolour sort of effect. If you look either in the top right or the bottom left, that's where the colour is solid and that's going to be the closest match. So if you're looking online, obviously it's always very difficult because online the colours are a little, always a little bit distorted depending on your screen settings. Um, but yeah, if you're looking in a shop and you're looking actually picking up a physical ink pad and having a look, they're all wrapped up so you can't open them up, but definitely look in the bottom corner, that's kind of the closest you're going to get. So as you can see, we've got a lot of similarities here. A lot of ink pads that look very, very similar and it's going to be hard for you to choose, like I say, particularly online if you're going through which ones to get next to stock up your stash. Um, I would say, I think at the moment, and I like to do this as almost a guessing game, but I think Abandoned Coral and Candy Apple are going to be the closest to, uh, to this, probably Candy Apple, I think, uh, which is, funny enough, Candy Apple kind of feels like a festive Christmassy colour as well. Um, but I've got here Abandoned Coral, Barn Door, Candy Apple, Fired Brick, and Lumberjack Plaid. No, now, sorry, not no, now, Fired Brick. When I see it like this with the other reds, to me it almost looks like a brown, a very rusty brown. But I have swatched these colours here for you, just so you can see them on paper. So swatching them on white is always going to look different to if you swatch them on craft or if you swatch them on black cardstock. Uh, so it's well worth doing a number of swatches if you can, but 99% of the time I'm going to be using them on white, which is why I do them this way. So you can see these colours, so uh, Abandoned Coral, very much pink, Barn Door, Candid Apple, Fire brick, you can see more of that orangey brown tone there, and then Lumberjack Plaid is definitely a deep red. Now, with each of these as well, I have already been through three of these. So Abandoned Coral, Barn Door, Candied Apple, because they're alphabetically before Festive Berries, we already have individual videos on each of these. Now, I'll link them up here, or link the playlist at least, so you can go and see all of those. So let's then take our swatch and have a look at these five colours alongside festive berries. I think this is really helpful if you are stocking up your stash, if you're on a limited budget and you're trying to decide which colours you need and which ones you can actually get away with not purchasing just yet. Um, not that I ever want to put anyone off buying Distress Oxides, but I think this might be helpful. Now, for me, as you can see there in the middle, Candied Apple is very, very similar 
slightly less pinky than festive berries okay um, as I said as well abandoned apple uh, sorry abandoned coral has a very similar tone but is a much lighter shade so uh, you can see the difference there now barn door is similar in darkness but again a much more orange shade we've already discovered that fire brick is almost almost a brown it's very much the orange undertone and the red of the lumberjack plaid although very dark and it is much darker than uh, festive berries again it kind of has that purpley bluey undertones so it's more of a red red to me what i call a red anyway <laughs> so hopefully that helps a little bit they're very similar but definitely i think if you are on a limited budget Candy Dapple and Festive Berries are two that you could probably get away with just having one of, one of the two each. Um, and I mean, even possibly Barn Door maybe as well. So uh, hopefully that helps some of you. Let me know in the comments if that is helpful. Let's just put these comparisons aside now and let's go to Festive Berries with our colour combinations. Now, as I said, first of all, a two an additional two color combination so this will be a three color combination so bringing in my blending mat now my blending mat that i'm using the all the blending brushes that i'm using as well um, and of course the distress oxides they are all available linked below so you can find all of those with the uh the labels that i'm using so for example festive berries on there you've got your quiche flamingo you know i've got all of the colors um, on my website. These are free downloads for you. You can go and print them off at home. I've got the labels for each of the Distress Oxide and Ink colours in black and white and I've also got them in the colours as well. So you can put them on your ink pad, you can put them on your brushes, you can put them on your storage, uh, wherever you need to, even if you want to put them in a folder for swatches using that colour. You know, use them to your heart's content. They are free for you and they're all linked down below. So uh, then I'm going to go from Festive Berries for this colour combination into Keach Flamingo. Now we already saw when we were looking at, oh what pink was it? It was a paler pink I think or it may have even been abandoned coral actually. We were looking at a pink colour and we were going into a green. Maybe it was actually a green we were focusing on in one of the previous videos and we went into a pink. That sounds more likely actually. Um, and it just worked really, really well. So I wanted to do similar here today with the Keach Flamingo, which works so perfectly into festive berries, doesn't it? Just, it just blends into there beautifully. But then let's give this a wipe. I always wipe my mat between my colors and as well with a dry towel so as not to get any water on the inks. And then into the green Keach Flamingo into crushed olive look at how beautiful this color is it's a very much a summery tone a summery combination you can imagine your, your flowers and your gardens looking very much like this in the summer and just bringing that pink down now just to clean off a little bit of the green from as you can see a bit of the green on the pink brush there where i've blended and then i'm going to pick up some more pink and i'm going to go through the middle and I'm going to blend that down back into the green again, just to lighten that up. Now what I've also done is just stuck my hand into the pink there, but how beautiful is that? Now, in addition to the color combinations that I'm giving you in full here, um, you can also pick and choose just a couple of colors from each of the combinations. Now you see that one where you've just got a hint of the festive berries at the bottom, just darkening the bottom of the pink, that's lovely. But if you wanted to just go pink and green, and you want to forget festive berries and actually just go for the Kitsch Flamingo and the Crushed Olive, take that inspiration by all means, go and use that in your projects. And I'd love to hear if you tag me, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, anywhere you like, I'm on all platforms, um, just tag me when you have tried out one of these combinations so I can see the uh, project and see how it actually works out in a project that would be really cool so there we go so there's your first combination of the three colors really bright tropical summery now let's put this to the side so festive berries kitsch flamingo and crushed olive now let's keep festive berries out and let's bring in a slightly darker toned down 
There we go, look at this. So we've now got tea dye, dusty concord, and aged mahogany. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to slot festive berries in between the two. It is brighter, but I think with these other three colors, it's going to really tone it down. Let's start with tea dye. Now, originally, when I was looking at these color combinations and trying to work out what we were going to do, I was going to go for antique linen, which is this one, and you can by all means try that, but I thought that was a little too bright against everything. I thought I'd like to keep this one toned down a bit. And if you look at tea dye, which we will come to within this series eventually, it's really got a, a red and orangey tone to it. So I thought it's actually going to work quite nicely, I think, into festive berries. So let's pop our festive berries down now. Working that into the tea dye and then bringing the tea dye up into there so mixing the two together so you kind of get this lovely peachy corally color between the two anyway let's give this a white because we're going to go into a completely different color now we're going to start going into the purple hues and you don't of course always need to blend a small strip like this this can be a complete card front if you want it to be it could be a small piece like this it's up to you it depends on your project but i just do little swatches like this and i would advise actually if you're doing a project and you're picking a new combination that you've not done before you're trying something out just have yourself a little swatch card and try it out first because the number of times i've put a combination together thinking it will work and actually it, for some reason it really didn't maybe the undertones are too different or whatever it may be and a different color was preferred um, if it's if you've already done it on a full card front you've really used a lot of ink there so just by doing it on a little swatch first of all and then if you like that swatch of course make sure you label the back so you know what you use and keep it aside for another time so there I've used aged mahogany which is a lovely deep red I'm putting that deep red then into um, a kind of purple side with aged mahogany we have got a video on this one up as well and we've also got a video on dusty concord like i say all alphabetical so anything before f we have already got videos up for do you know what one day i will be using a color it will be the last color and i'll be able to say that every single uh, every single color that i'm using we already have full videos for so that will be brilliant and i'm getting there every few days i'm uploading another new uh, color video so do definitely subscribe to my channel and uh, like the playlist go and have a look at that regularly so you can see what's new that week so dusty concord into aged mahogany there at the end so really going from that warm age sorry that warm tea dye through into dusty concord isn't that just beautiful now um i wanted to do a little bit of an experiment I, I try to give you tips now and then for using your distress oxides we've done water splatting and all sorts already but something else i wanted to show you was how this just this um, color combination picked at random would look on say black cardstock just as an example for you because oxides work actually really well on darker color cardstocks whereas the distress inks don't so well so here I've got a black piece of cardstock, similar size to the last one, and I'm just going to do exactly the same combination again. Look how beautifully that tea dye works into the black. So this is a little bit different, of course, um, than the white, and you'll see you get a much, much different effect going into black. But I just thought it's important to show you because I always work on to white, and it may be that you, you know you have a different idea for a project or you're, you're using a different base so maybe you're working onto a journal cover that's already black and you just can't cover it with white whatever it may be or you just want a di completely different look so like I say working through the same colors again and I'll do a little bit of tweaking as I go as I do with the white now what you'll find is that with the white you cover the area very very quickly with the black the cardstock underneath really does show through in a different way it shows through a lot more and you actually see more of the streaks and the lines from the brush so into my aged mahogany there which is quite difficult to see the difference between the last two colors i've just put down the festive berries and the aged mahogany and then lastly the dusty concord now the paler the color the more it will show up on the black so look at this 
gorgeous 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 and then I'm going to bring that aged mahogany put some more of this down into the purple you can layer up on black as well for deeper colors there we go so if I put the two side by side you can see the difference but actually you can see the colors on black and if you just want a subtle hint of color but you're working on a black cardstock it's a really lovely way to do it but look at that difference and I will in another video I will do this on craft cardstock as well just so you can see that so hopefully this has given you some inspiration for using the lovely festive berries so a beautiful colorway there we've got two new combinations for you to try out and uh, definitely take a look but like I say I think if you are limited with your stash and you're you're gradually building it up I don't think you need to rush out and get candied apple and festive berries together it's entirely your choice I'm sure eventually you'll want every color that we've got I say we've got that uh, Ranger have got I don't work for Ranger in any way just disclaimer there um so yeah hopefully you will eventually be able to build it up but i do understand at the moment and uh, not everyone has the budget to buy, purchase every single color so hopefully this has helped please do give me a thumbs up and a subscribe and stay tuned because very soon there will be the next color along in the uh distress oxide range so we're going from festive berries to another red and we're actually going to be looking at fired brick which is one that we've looked at uh, today. So that will be coming up again very, very soon. Take care, everybody. I'll see you again soon.